So, when it comes to worker salary, uh, issues of inflation comes up. So for private the, for, jet, the, the, not only one government. Wait, the, the owner of the private jet mm. has staff strength of twenty. Oh, even ten. Oh, oh. and you, you prefer to let that one go, and you know give up the interest of millions of other. We we, we are very very careful. Workers. We are very very careful in dealing with issues like that. Very very careful. We don't want to be seen as stopping businesses, but it's also our duty to blow the whistle. So we serve as whistleblowers. So that Nigerians will take collective action. You see, there are a whole lot of things that Nigerians should do. Support the labor movement. Labor movement is not alone in this struggle. The civil society organizations are also involved in this struggle. All you have to do is to support us as we go on to engage the people who are holding down the progress of Nigeria. But Nigerians say that they're suspicious of you guys. There is always suspicion. They think you sell out all the time. Even in the Nigerian army, there is suspicion. Even in the Nigerian police, there is suspicion. Wherever you have more than one person operating, there will be, there may be okay. suspicion. But okay. it's for us to build. Okay. Okay. Um, comrade um, Isa Aremo is quoted to have said, "We will make." Okay. It says um, the president should play his own part, mm. and leave the NLC with the state governors. And then he says, says, I quote, we will make this, this is of the governors who have refused to pay the minimum mm. wage. Mm. We will make their states ungovernable because they are going against the spirit and the letter of the Nigerian constitution of minimum wage. That is the truth. That is the truth. The comrade is right. And that was what happened in 2011. After we are, the, the, the law has been passed, we moved to the states. I do not understand why the federal government is trying to make this thing their battle when it is not theirs. The president should do the, simp the simplest thing, transmit this to the National Assembly. If the governors, any governor that has any issues can go to the National Assembly and argue his case and debate it. Okay? When, the law, when it has been passed and it becomes law, let the state governor that says he won't pay tell his workers in the state that he won't pay. We will come. We know how to engage the governors. Let the federal government do their own piece. We have been saying that since. Let, them, let him do his own piece. The way it is today, it's like he is the one. The president is the one that is sitting on the national minimum wage today. He is the problem that we have as we speak. You know, a lot of people, some people are tweeting at us and are asking whose side we are on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They are wondering which side, whether we are on the side of government or on the side of labor. But then there are the same people who are saying, what about workers? Somebody else is tweeting, say, what about workers that go to work and for two weeks they do not move a single file? Do they deserve a pay raise? Uh -huh. So of at the course. end of the labor, Paint is throwing out issues that people are beginning to wonder, who do we support, who do yeah. we stand with? Uh, they are saying, um, Austin is saying here, okay, Austin says, Ashley is on strike because of funding for education, not yes. wages. Mm -hmm. Patrick says, um, what are, yes, Jack, what are the parameters that labor is bringing forth so what? that the people, mm -hmm. so that people can get assured that your actions and demands are implementable and will not hurt the economy? Well, you see, we have gone beyond parameters. The United Labour Congress of Nigeria came out with seven parameters. And these were submitted to... That this demand will not affect the economy <laughs> negatively. How can it affect the economy negatively when we have done all those summaries and all that, what we have been discussing? The fact is very, very clear. Okay? And the one that says Nigerian workers are not productive, he has not lifted. The Nigerian worker did not employ himself. If I employ you to do a work for me, I survive you. And I make sure you do the work. So it is a leadership failure. In fact, it's a shame that you employ somebody and you refuse to survive him. And he's not doing work. It's, it is not the fault of the one that has refused to do his work. It is the fault of the one that has refused to discipline him for not doing his work. So you cannot, as far as we are concerned, once you employ a worker, if you have employed a worker, you pay him. If he does not produce, it's because you have not done your work. In the labor movement, we take our workers can you, to... Can you fire him? Yes, of course. We, in the labor movement, we take our workers through productivity uh, trainings. We tell them the essence of working. But, but you will agree that it is a fact that there are many people in the civil service services across the nation mm. who do next to nothing at work. Who employ them? No. That's not my Somebody question. asked me that question. And I told but you are aware. I'm there not, are. <laughs> oh, people have made those alleg uh, allegations. Oh, you're People not aware. Made those okay, there, are, there are allegations. Uh -huh. okay. that, there you, don't, you don't know of any. Work. You don't know of any. I've not encountered any man. Okay. <laughs> now, uh, let me quote um, Mr. Dili Alaki. In 2000, he came on Sunrise okay. and told us that when they went into the Secretariat, they were going on a tour of the various ministries. Okay. 
they got to a ministry and there was a lady cleaning fish in the office. Yes, sir. I am quoting the commissioner. Yes, you see, why I, why I was saying that, okay, is that there is no pervasiveness of this. There is a responsibility on the part of he who has employed somebody. And those that employed them are leaders. That was why I asked you that question. Who employed them? Okay? In the secretariat that I run, I also have staff. It's my duty to supervise them. If, if they make mistakes, it is my duty to correct them. It's my duty to ensure they come to work on time. It's my, duty, it's my duty to ensure that they do the work that we employ them to do. The long and short of this is certain um, ministries mm. in state governments are over bloated. That may be true, yes. So if um, Labour, for instance, says, look, we believe that you cannot afford this money because you have too many staff. Suppose you cut down on the number so that you can pay this minimum it, wage. Yeah, it is not our duty to tell the government uh, make such suggestion to government. It's not our duty. Okay. okay? Because, like I said, we were not the ones that employed the workers. But okay. what we insist, okay, what we insist is that once, once you have employed, employed the worker, you must pay them the minimum and wage. And then you must follow due process if you want to do anything. Because there are laws that govern what we do. So you must follow them. If you say, okay, you want to sack workers, all we, all we ask you to do is to follow the law. Okay. Follow the law. Follow the due process. Yes. That's what we have. We have never said... There has not been any time somebody went to somewhere, probably, probably uh, Cadbury or any other company, and I said, we want to uh, sack workers. We say, okay, you want to. What happened? And you give us explanation. Okay, follow the due process. We won't stand because it is your business. You follow the due process, we won't have any problem with you. Okay. So um, the strike, the general strike is not being called out for Tuesday. Yes. You are having a national awareness rally. A day of national outrage, a day of national mourning by Nigerian workers to sensitize. Mourning. Mourning, yes. We mourn the poverty, the excruciating, the privation and suffering Nigerian workers are going through in the hands of our leaders, those that are supposed to protect us. Do you know how many Nigerian workers that are dying as a result of insecurity today? Chris, uh, let me ask this. Maybe, I don't know if Labour is also looking at this. I mean, growing up, we used to hear of federal housing estates, state mm. housing estates, mm -hmm. where... Um, I mean, union members had houses and all of that, but those things don't exist anymore. Is this part of the demands of labor, or would, they, would this come up much later? You know, if, you, if you had followed the, the, the news to uh, last year, you know, the federal government, in conjunction with the labor movement, also was, uh, went about commissioning, okay? Uh, foundation laying ceremonies in many regions about the six geopolitical regions in Nigeria, okay, laying foundation stone for housing estates mm. is between the federal government and the Nigerian labor movement. Okay. Okay. Huh? So we do all those, but we don't make noise. Ninety-five percent of what we do, we are should those make things. noise. No, we don't make noise about those our major jobs. When we brought in buses, did we make noise? We didn't make noise, but we brought in buses. The buses were carrying people at reduced, discounted fares all over Lagos, all over Abuja, in Port Harcourt. We did all. Are those. they still doing that? The buses are there. The buses are there. You can see the labor mass transit. You can see the TUC mass transit. They are there. And we are doing a whole lot of things. This one, national minimum wage is sensitive. And that is why we make a whole lot of noise about it. Okay, so the general strike is... Not, there's no date for the general it could strike be, It could be yet. that eight. It could be? Yes, or the next day. Or the next week. Okay. It could... In the moment we go on that... After that sensitization, we just decide on a strike our, without we further notice. notice to anybody. That is what... So you, we'll and just, we have communicated the government. We'll just hear on the radio that the that just organized labor is, is calling out a general strike starting tonight. You just see our people withdrawing their services. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So we wish you luck at your Thank meeting you. of uh, Monday. We will not be there. USC will not be there. Why? Well, we unless, have unless we have... That nothing has changed. Unless in our engagement, okay, at the leadership level, that we see something, that something has changed. If nothing has changed, we'll continue mobilizing as we are mobilizing for the eight. Well, but we're not the, going to be part. We don't, yeah, we don't want to be distracted. We don't so want to who, who is going to the meeting on Monday then? Uh, the, the ones that went to the meeting yesterday. Who are the ones that went to the meeting yesterday? I, I don't want to mention names here. USC was not part of it. Okay. All right. So, well, um, 
Chris Onyeka is Secretary General, United Labour Congress. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Ma. Thank and, you for having um, me. letting us know exactly what is going on and whether there's going to be a general strike from Tuesday or not. The media ought to support us. It's uh, our struggle. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you. Ma. Sunrise will be right back with another interesting conversation. Please join us.